I don't know the lady, so perhaps it's much better that way, but I really don't know the lady. So she wrote this beautiful story, and about, I don't know, years later, no police reports, no anything. Years later, the same person, they called up, did you attack at Mar-a-Lago this woman, this writer, whatever her name is, and she was a witness in a case. Her and Leeds were the two witnesses, only two witnesses. Did you attack her? I said, who is she? And they said, she writes for People magazine. I said, I don't know anything about the lady. I, if, I had a story long ago, years before, about people, but it was a very nice story. So I don't know, it has to be made up because I don't know what you're talking about. It turned out that the same lady that wrote this beautiful story, years later said I attacked her. No, think of this. Oh, and she said the butler knew everything. The old expression, the butler did it, right? Very famous in crime stories. Well, the butler was Tony Senecal, worked for me for a long time. He was, at, he was retired at that time. That was years later, he retired. He was at, retired when this hoax came out. And what happened is he totally confirmed my story. And he didn't even work for me anymore. He passed away a couple of years ago, a good man. He said, the woman was crazy. It never happened. I was the one that served her, whatever they, she was drinking. And I was there and nothing ever happened. But you don't need the butler. All you have to do is read the story. Think of this, a woman comes into Mar-a-Lago, interviews me about a love story, a story about my wife and myself, and during that interview, I attacked her and pushed her up against the wall, violently, okay? And then she leaves and she writes a, a perfect story. A perfect story, she doesn't mention the event. Again, there's nothing on file at all, zero. There was no complaints, there were no complaints to People Magazine. There was no witness, there was nothing. Yeah, well, there was a witness, the butler, and he's already said everything, he's already told the story. Because this story, likewise, like Leeds, this story has followed me around. I could go through many, many other stories outside of this. You know, it's very funny, when you're rich and famous, you get a lot of people come up with a lot of stories. But you're writers, and some of you are legitimate writers, and some of you aren't. Some of you are fake news, and some of you are real news. But put yourself in my position. I'm running for president, and I have all these cases, all of a sudden, come, come out. And they're fake cases, and they report back to DOJ, and you have Lisa Monaco, one of the people at DOJ who I saw the other day talking about the Russia, Russia, Russia hooks, and yet she's friends with Andrew Weissman and that whole group and crew who should be sued, by the way, because they're not a charity. All they are is a political organization that goes after Trump for the last eight years. I mean, he's a sick person that runs that too. But Lisa Monaco is in the Department of Justice, but she's a uh, Andrew Weissman person who's been after me for years. So far, he's failed, and he's having a heart attack because I'm leading in the polls, I guess. If you look at the uh, Nate Silver, very respected guy, I don't know him, but he has me up by a lot. So let's say we're leading, or let's say we're tied, or let's say what difference, I'm in the race, it's between two people, but I think we're leading by a lot because the opponent refuses to do an interview because she can't talk. And uh, they're not gonna skate through it. We're not gonna have a Marxist president. The people are getting it. So we go down to court today to talk about this case is a scam. And all I can say is that I never met the woman other than this picture, which could have been AI generated, I don't know showed up out of nowhere, but it's fine. Nice picture with her, her husband, and lots of other people are online. It's a celebrity line. But never met her, never touched her, never had anything to do with her. The other thing is I was very famous then. If I would have walked into Bergdorf Goodman, the department store that she said, everybody would have said, oh, there's Trump. And it would have been at that time on page six. Page six was the equivalent of today's internet. And it would have been a big story if I would have walked into that store, gone into a dressing room, and supposedly you know what to her. Never happened. Never happened, F total phony story. And I feel sad that I have to come up here and explain it. I have all this legal talent, but legal talent cannot overcome rigged judges. They can't overcome a 4% Republican area. And I'm disappointed in my legal talent, I'll be honest with you. They're good, they're good people, they're talented people. Today at the uh, trial, they didn't mention the, the dress. So the Monica Lewinsky type dress was a big part of the trial, big, big part of the trial. I said, why didn't you mention that? And I heard there was a dress involved. And I wasn't frightened at all because I did nothing with her. Never, never touched this woman, saw this woman, knew, had no idea who she was. But they have a dress, sir. I said, so what? Well, sir, it's very, sir. They used that dress to try and intimidate me. They used that dress with the public. That dress was such a famous dress. It was Monica Lewinsky, part two, the dress. And the judge wanted it for trial and it was gonna go into trial, and then they found out there was nothing on the dress, which I knew, and then the judge wouldn't allow it to be used. So they used it as a cudgel, they used it as a hammer over my head. And then the judge, when he heard 
That it was, it showed totally negative, totally negative. The judge wouldn't allow us to use it at trial. Then there was an Anderson Cooper interview where she said essentially, no, he didn't rape me. She was selling her book. She wrote a book. The book would have been a total failure, probably was anywhere, though probably sold more recently. Again, this is a woman that wasn't doing well until she came out with this stuff about me. And that's happened to others too, by the way. Um, they, she's not the only one. But they have the Anderson Cooper tape. And in the Anderson Cooper tape, it's an interview of her. And Cooper says something to the effect, did he rape you? Did he rape you? He was so happy. Oh, did he rape you? And she gave a very good answer for me, but a bad answer for CNN for Anderson. And he said, uh, we're going to commercial break right now. We're going. Then she came back from commercial break and she was much more hostile. But this man wouldn't let us use the tape or the proper uh, questions having to do with the tape. Wouldn't let us, the judge, Judge Kaplan wouldn't let it be used. We wanted to get the outtakes. In other words, what did Anderson Cooper talk to her about during that intermission for a commercial that he called for immediately? Where do you see this? I mean, some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. We're going to commercial break right now. And so what happened is we weren't able to use it. The other thing is we had not one trial, we had two trials. Nobody understands why. We asked for a consolidation. And I wanted to show up to the trial, to the first trial. My lawyer, who's not up here, not with us any longer. Sir, you should not show up. You're the former president or the president. I don't even know when, when the trial was, but you're the president of the United States, sir. This is beneath you. I've got this 100%. The dress is negative, but he wasn't able to use it. Sir, it's beneath you to show up. I said, but wouldn't that be bad for a jury? Wouldn't that be sort of bad for a jury if I don't show up? He said, sir, you don't have to show up. I've got this. You shouldn't do it. It's beneath you. It's beneath the office of the president. I understood what he meant by that. And so I didn't show up. And I was found guilty of something that I didn't do with a woman that I have never seen, touched, or in any way was involved with. Nor would I want to be. I would not want to be. My people say, please don't say that. I would not want to be involved with her. And that's where we are. So we're appealing it. And people would say it's not a friendly panel based on the appointments, but you'll look that up yourself. But I hope they understand this is the office of the President of the United States, and there has to be fairness shown. Our court system is looking so bad. If you're a Democrat, these are all Democrat-appointed people. Biden, Clinton, I think others, three people. They seem very good today, and I mean, they seem absolutely fine, but uh, I've read and I've heard. It's not a friendly panel, but I wasn't surprised because I don't get friendly panels. I don't get friendly panels. But where we've had fair judges, where we've had brilliant judges, frankly, I, I don't know the Judge in Florida, Judge Cannon, don't know her at all. But um, I think she's a brilliant woman. I think she handled a scam. It's a scam case. That's the documents case. That's a case where Biden, who had 10 times more documents, took all this stuff for years, 50 years. And he was exonerated. Of course, they said he was incompetent, so he wasn't fit. So he was exonerated based on that. But me, I don't get exonerated so easily. And I had a thing called the Presidential Records Act, which exonerates me. But we won that trial. And the other side plays the ref, Crew and Weissman and all these people. And again, Lisa Monaco should not be involved in this because she's been after Trump for years and now she's like the second person at the DOJ, but she's with all these people. And they're playing the ref and they say terrible things about judges. They do it with the Supreme Court justices because they think they're going to intimidate them. I think it should be illegal. That's what the DOJ should look into, the legality of these people taking a brilliant judge and demeaning her and taking other people that are fair and solid and demeaning them. It's called playing the ref. Nobody did it better than the late, great Bobby Knight basketball coach. He would play, he would scream at those refs and everything. And said, they say, Bobby, you're not going to get the decision over 10. Yep, but the next one I will. And he was right. He was a great basketball coach. Last coach to have an undefeated season. Last coach in basketball to have many years ago. He also endorsed me, but he played the ref. These people are playing the ref when they are allowed to call for a recusal, impeachment of a judge because they're not getting their way. And for some reason, the other side doesn't do that. They don't do that. The other side is much softer. Uh, Republicans play it a lot softer, uh, but they're, they play it legitimately. So I'm going to ask, uh, if I might, Will Sharf to come up, just say a couple of words about what took place today. One of our attorneys working on this ridiculous, it's a ridiculous case. Remember, it never happened. It was made up for political reasons. And the DOJ is behind everything. Every one of these cases. It's political interference. It's a witch hunt, just like the fake Russia, Russia, Russia scam was a witch hunt. And just like they want to start that scam all over again by announcing that Russia, 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 we're talking about. And you know what they do when they do that? They intimidate people from having a fair election. They intimidate poll workers from speaking up when they see crooked things take place in the election. And it's a, it's a disgrace. Our country's in serious trouble. Our judicial system is in very serious trouble. Uh, Will, please come up. Thank you.
Good morning, y'all. My name is Will Scharf. I'm one of President Trump's attorneys. Today, we presented oral argument before the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in one of two cases brought against President Trump by E. Jean Carroll. Now, it's really important to remember that E. Jean Carroll's story at its heart is an utterly implausible he said, she said story. There is no corroboration for anything she has ever claimed about President Trump. There are no corroborating witnesses, as President Trump alluded to. There is not confirmatory DNA. No police report was filed at the time of this alleged incident. She was unable to identify when this incident occurred until quite recently. No surveillance evidence or witnesses have ever uh, been found or come forward confirming any aspect aspect of E. Jean Carroll's story. In light of that, in light of the utter implausibility of the story that E. Jean Carroll was attempting to sell to the jury in this case, her attorneys introduced evidence that should have never seen the inside of a courtroom. Utterly uh, in insane uh, efforts to introduce propensity witnesses, Jessica Leeds and Natasha Stoinoff, uh, most notably, in an unfair and improper effort to buttress E. Jean Carroll's failed attempt uh, to assault President Trump. Uh, Jessica Leeds' story is instructive here. This is a woman who claims uh, that in the middle of a crowded airliner in 1979, uh, President Trump assaulted her. Leeds has never been able to identify where this plane departed from, where it went to, uh, the date of the flight in question, uh, making our efforts to disprove her testimony uh, extremely difficult. Under the federal rules of evidence, uh, this story should have never been. Uh, very much in coordination with the DOJ. They actually took just about their top person and they put him into the offices of the Attorney General of New York and then also the office of the DA, DA Bragg's office, to make sure the case is brought and brought viciously against their political opponent. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Businesses will not come to New York because of it. They actually, in the case of uh, Ngoran, they used a consumer fraud. It's never used before for a thing like this. And not only were my numbers correct, and again, this was a generality, all you need is a general, but I, I had really good numbers, but they were very conservative, very, very much on the low side. And the judge knew that, and the judge ruled a fine against me, the likes of which has never even been heard of. Businesses will never come to this state as long as that is able to be held up, uh, because we won that trial so conclusively. We had an expert witness said that President Trump's financial, this was an expert witness from the Stern School of Business, one of the most uh, highly respected people in the country as an expert witness. He said, to the best of my remembering, it's a big statement, but he said, this is perhaps the best financial statement I've ever seen. But the judge made me pay like a $400 million fine. This is a consumer fraud statement. Think of it. Cons consumer fraud's uh, case that they made it in. The judge refused to give it over to the commercial division where they could understand things, and they would have dismissed it immediately because this case had no merit whatsoever. The judge wanted to settle the case for a very much smaller amount. And I said, I I'm not going to say I didn't do anything wrong. But he would have settled the case for a much smaller amount. He wanted to settle it for a much more. We had numerous meetings in his office for a fraction of the number that he gave. That was one of the interesting things. I figured that the worst that you could do is what he wanted to settle for, which was a very small number by comparison. And then he just came out with this number. Uh, this was a coordination with the DOJ. And the other case that you know about and you've been hearing about, which is same kind of a thing, also in coordination, is the Bragg case. And they actually wanted to put them together in New York. They wanted to put the DA case together with the attorney general case, but they both wanted credit. They couldn't understand, you know, they, they both wanted credit, so they had their own cases. And it's very corrupt in New York, and very, very corrupt. It's a very corrupt place, and doing very badly. But when people see what happened, and when they see, oh, I've had so many calls from business people saying, this is just terrible. Uh, today, there was a story about somebody in Southern District who's highly respected, knocking the hell out of both of those cases, say it's an embarrassment they were allowed to be brought. And I'm going to write out a list of things from Alan Dershowitz, Andrew McCarthy, uh, Greg Jarrett, the, some of the, the greatest uh, people, uh, all, legal, all legal scholars, great people, uh, Jonathan Turley, like 10 highly respected, the most highly respected people that quote Calabrese, Judge Calabrese, that quote on cases. And they, I mean, shockingly, they can't even believe it. They said this case should not have been allowed to be brought. And that's about pretty much both cases, but it's about the case that we have in front of Judge Mershon. Uh, that case is a disgrace. Should have never been allowed. I did nothing wrong. And he took a non-existent expired, long expired by the statute limitations, misdemeanor. He made it into 34 or something more than that counts of felony. Nobody can even believe it. And if you look at that case, he wouldn't allow it. That whole thing was done by an attorney. I had nothing to do with it. That was done by an attorney, a sleazebag named Michael Cohen. And he did the whole thing. And you're allowed to have reliance on attorney. It's called reliance on attorney. You have a reliance on attorney. Attorney's allowed to do things. And all it was is a non-disclosure agreement with somebody that said nothing happened, by the way. I might add that. If you don't mind, I'll add that. We have a statement, nothing happened. And he got a non-disclosure agreement. He did it on his own. And this judge refused to allow us to use that as a defense, the attorney-client defense, which is very standard 
Other people have never heard that you're not allowed to use it. But he's the one that did it because I was running for president and running the country. He's the one that did it. So all of these cases are a disgrace. But the case that we had today uh, downtown, uh, I wish we could have mentioned the dress. Again, got the idea from Monica Lewinsky, but it was negative, wasn't allowed to be used. I wish we could have mentioned many of the other things, and I certainly wish we could have gone to CNN and got the outtakes, what's called the outtakes. What did Anderson Cooper tell her during the commercial? I'd love to find that out. So that's where we are. We have a very corrupt system of laws, but in that system we have some very good judges also, and I think in the end the good judges will prevail. And I hope Democrat-appointed judges can see a scam like this where somebody just makes up a story, probably out of law and order. I don't know, she made it up out of somewhere, but check out the law and order episode that we're talking about. Make up a story and I end up getting sued. And by the way, the punishment is like $89 million and wouldn't have two cases. It should have been one case. But two cases is better because you get double bad publicity. We asked the judge, could you consolidate the cases? Same case. And he refused to do so. He wanted two cases. So two cases, two sets of lawyers, two everything. It's really, really very disgraceful. Let me talk about uh, job numbers because, as you know, they just came out and they're a basic disaster. They are really, they are really bad. You had numbers that are shocking. Native-born Americans, we lost 1.3 million jobs, while foreign-born Americans were able to take all of those jobs. So foreigners coming in illegally, largely illegally, into our country, took the jobs of native-born Americans. And I've been telling you that's what's going to happen. Because we have millions and millions of people pouring into our country, many from prisons and jails and mental institutions and insane asylums. Traffickers, human traffickers, women traffickers, sex traffickers. Which, by the way, that's the kind of thing that people should be looking at because it's horrible. And it's turning out that migrant crime is far worse than any crime that we've ever experienced. If you look at Aurora, Colorado, they're taking over.